After having my tracheostomy tube for more than seven years, one thing which has been a stumbling block for me is people staring at me. Yes, I do understand I am on life support, but sometimes I cannot tolerate people staring at me. Some people have told me over the years how wonderful it is I have a tracheostomy tube and I can educate the world wherever I go. While I do like to educate people, there are times when I just want to get in and out of the grocery store without people glaring at me. Also, there have been times when having a tracheostomy tube and ventilator has caused a lot of needless complications. If you stay tuned to the end, I will share with you one of those stories. First things first, when trying to hide your tracheostomy tube, please make sure you can still breathe after hiding it. Some people believe you can just cover up the tracheostomy tube and you will be just fine. But remember, the tracheostomy tube is needed as an airway. Just like if you cover up your nose and mouth, you will not be able to breathe if you cover up your tracheostomy tube. Also, if you use a ventilator, caution needs to be taken to not block the exhalation valve on the ventilator tubing. If you cover the ventilator exhalation valve tightly, the person will not be able to breathe out. There are products on the market which are called tracheostomy tube bibs. These items look like a bib a child wears. For children, in general, the bibs do not make people stare. For adults, however, they can at times look very odd. To make the bib blend in, a person needs to choose his clothes wisely. My method of choice for covering my tracheostomy tube is using a scarf. The scarves I wear are usually very lightweight and like this one have holes in them or like this one and they're very lightweight and sheer. I do not use a heavy scarf because I cannot breathe through the material. If you are using a ventilator, you can use a heavier scarf as long as the scarf does not block the exhalation valve. When choosing a scarf, it is wise to keep the temperature in mind. If it is cold outside, you can wear a knit scarf. However, if it is in the middle of summer and you are wearing a knit scarf, it's going to look very odd and for this reason it's better to use a fashion scarf. Okay, the first scarf I'm going to show you is with this infinity scarf which is very holy and you can see through it, it's very breathable. So let me show you how you do it with a tracheostomy tube because quite frankly, you can do this any way you want with a ventilator air hose um, attached to your tracheostomy tube, but with a tracheostomy tube, you have to be a little bit more mindful where the end of the tracheostomy tube is so you can still breathe. So let me just show you how you do it with a tracheostomy tube. First, you just wrap this around two times. Like so, and this is still evident that you have tracheostomy tube, so let's go tighter. And now I often just let this actually hang out like this. Uh, most people don't even realize you have a tracheostomy tube. Some people get a little apprehensive because it's kind of sticking out, so they will very loosely cover it like this. So that's what you can do with a tracheostomy tube. If you have a ventilator, ugh, you can really do whatever you want. Um, you're still gonna see the bottom of the ventilator air hose with this scarf, so. Using an infinity scarf with a ventilator air hose is not the best choice, but if you just have a tracheostomy tube, the infinity scarf works really well. Now let me show you with a different scarf. Okay, now this is more of a fashion scarf. You have a lot more material to work with and you can tie this a couple different ways. I'm gonna take off my ventilator air hose and show you how to do it with a tracheostomy tube. And then I'll just show you when you have a ventilator air hose attached, it's really the same thing, a little bit different. So here we go, let me take my ventilator air hose off. So first you're just going to put this in half, then you're going to wrap this around your neck, 
Then you're gonna pull this through. Now I always put this knot kind of over to one side or the other, um, and then have my tracheostomy tube underneath. And then just kind of like that, no one even notices. It's not even completely covered. And you can still breathe without this, uh, you know, covering it and blocking your air hole. Um, so that's what you can do like that. If you want, you can very, 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 very loosely put a little bit of fabric over it like that. Okay. So that's how you can do it with that. There's also another way you can wrap this. You can just take the scarf like this, put it around your neck, tie it in a knot. And now you do the same thing. You're just gonna kinda get up close to your neck. And again, you're gonna allow this tracheostomy air hose, or um, the tracheostomy airway to remain open. And you're just gonna kinda just let it, just kinda drape over. If you didn't have this cuff, um, you really wouldn't even see this. So you can do that, or you can actually just kinda um, drape it over a little bit more if you want. But again, keep this, this airway open. You don't wanna put it real tight like this and can't, can't breathe. Always try to make sure this is an open airway and it just drapes very easily over it. Now, if you have a ventilator air hose, same general affair, except you can go a little tighter if you want. It doesn't really matter. And you can just put that over your ventilator air hose. No one will even know you have an air hose, except please do not block this exhalation valve right here. Don't put it real tight and be like, no one knows I have a ventilator air hose because you're not gonna be able to breathe out and you're gonna be like. So make sure you always just lightly drape it over or I even just put it down and then just place it even to one side. Most people don't even realize if you have this down low with this hanging out, they don't even realize this is attached anywhere. They kind of like, huh, look, tubing. I wonder where that goes. So those are some tips and tricks with using a scarf with a tracheostomy tube and a tracheostomy tube and a ventilator air hose. The other way I often cover my tracheostomy tube is by using a jacket with a high neck and a zipper. This jacket works really well for this. Let me show you how to cover a tracheostomy tube and or tracheostomy tube with a ventilator air hose with a jacket or something with a high neck. So first of all, you're gonna put the jacket on, which I've already done because it takes a while to put this on for me. <laughs> and then you're gonna zip it all the way up. If you have a ventilator, you're actually gonna put the ventilator air hose underneath. Let me show you. And then you're gonna cover it all the way up like that. And look, you don't even realize I have a tracheostomy tube and ventilator air hose. If you're using a ventilator air hose, remember you have an exhalation valve, so don't cover it. Don't hug yourself real tight because you're not gonna be able to breathe. You're not going to be able to breathe out. Also, after a while, the carbon dioxide will build up. So about every half an hour, um, you're just gonna want to make sure you get rid of the carbon dioxide. Either unzipping this like this will help get rid of the carbon dioxide up, or you can, com you can completely unzip it, or another option is just to lift up underneath to let the carbon dioxide out. But please don't keep this covered all day because the carbon dioxide is going to build up and it's gonna be very hard to breathe out. Now let me show you if you just have a tracheostomy tube, like this. So what are you gonna do? You're just gonna zip up. Like so, I always pull it up a little bit um, to cover because it tends, the ventilator tubing usually kind of keeps it secure, but when you just have a tracheostomy tube, the collar tends to drop down a little bit, so I always pull it up. And just like that, you don't even realize. Ta-da!
So wearing a turtleneck, many people think, oh, that's a great idea. It'll cover everything up. Well, it will, but there's a lot of material to breathe through and it'll make you very short of breath. Let me show you how it works with the tracheostomy tube. Here we go. That looks wonderful, right? But let me tell you, it is really hard to breathe. Okay, it's really hard to breathe through all the material. It makes me very short of breath. So I don't recommend it because if you use a tracheostomy tube only without a ventilator, you will become very short of breath. And you'll be like, let me show you how it works with a ventilator air hose attached to it. You're gonna put it through the, um, through underneath. Now this will also work, but it kind of looks a little weird. Got your tubing here. And then also this is very, very um, tight. You can see it's very close to my body. And this exhalation valve, which is right here, is very close to me and it's not being allowed to exhale. So in a very short time, I'm gonna get very short of breath because you're not gonna be able to breathe out. You might be able to pull this forward and try to get the carbon dioxide out or you're gonna be like flashing everybody like, hey, don't mind me, I'm just pulling up my shirt here because I need to breathe out. So in general, I don't recommend turtlenecks. There are other alternatives such as using a scarf or using a jacket that's much more breathable than using a turtleneck. There are times when I'm more likely to cover up my tracheostomy tube and ventilator than others. For example, when I go to the grocery store, I will often hide my tracheostomy tube and ventilator. Also, when attending a new congregation, traveling, or going to a new environment where people do not know anything about tracheostomy tubes and ventilators, I will often hide my medical gear. Many people wonder when I go traveling, why would I ever want to cover up my tracheostomy tube and ventilator air hose? I should want to educate the world wherever I go about breathing issues, about tracheostomy tubes, ventilators. Yes, that is a good idea. However, People have probably never traveled with a tracheostomy tube and or ventilator and realized the complications which may arise. Let me tell you my story. A while back, I needed to travel via an airplane. I did not think this was going to be a big deal. I would just check in, go on the airplane, have my ventilator air hose disconnect. You know, it would be no big deal big big deal so i get to the check-in counter and i'm like hi i'm here to check in for my flight and the woman's like oh, what is that she's all freaked out and i was like uh you know just a ventilator air hose and you know tricky asked me to no big deal and she was like i don't know i don't i don't think we can let you travel uh, you have an you have a hole in your airway i don't think that's safe to travel so I sat there for 45 minutes, just waiting and waiting. And the minute, you know, just kept ticking off the clock. And I was like, huh, I'm going to miss my flight. Mm, almost, almost missed my flight. Yes. Thankfully, right at the last moment, she's like, okay, I got clearance from, I think she called headquarters. I don't even know where she called, but they're like, yeah, it's fine. She can travel. So the woman very apprehensively let me travel and I literally had to run through the airport. And literally I was running through the airport. I was like, <laughs> and I get to the plane just before it takes off. Yeah, that was quite stressful. So the next time I was traveling, I'm like, I am not going to let this uh, cause any stress or complications. So what do I do? I put it underneath my, uh, my jacket. Let me just show you here. Da -da. So, look at that. Let me move this up, maybe. I don't know. Hope you can still hear me. Huh. Anyways, I was like, da -da -da -da. you know, just, 
Hi, I just, I'm wearing a jacket. Thankfully it was cold, so I didn't look like a dork wearing a jacket in the middle of summer, but we were good to go. And so I was like, I'm gonna check in. And I look and the person that checked me in was not working. I was like, oh, hallelujah. Anyways, I was like getting ready to be the next person to check in. And there comes that woman. And I was like, oh no, just, just act cool, act cool. Maybe she won't remember me. <laughs> Anyways, Finally, the woman gets behind the counter and just before she calls the next person in line, the person right next to her is like, next. And I'm like, let me go to this other lady. I'm here. And then the person that I had previously, she was like, next. And I was like, whew. I was like 10 seconds away from being called to that woman that I had the last time. So I'm sitting here with a new person and I looked perfectly normal and she's like, oh, no problem, let me check you in. Do, 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 do. Anyways, the person next to her who had checked me in previously, she kind of looks over my direction and she's like, hey, hi. And I'm like, hi, just acted friendly. And I could tell she's like, I think I might know this person. Where do I know her from? And I'm just like, don't remember me. Don't remember me. I'm, I'm just another customer here. <laughs> and as the person in line is coming up towards her, she just keeps looking at me and looking at me. And then the person's in front of her. And so she redirects her gaze to the person in front of her. And she does not remember that I had the tracheostomy tube and the ventilator and it caused a huge ruckus. Anyways, she's talking to the person next to me and she says, oh yes, I usually work at 6 a.m. every day, but today I got to sleep in and I didn't start till 9 a.m. And I'm just like, oh, hallelujah. Because if she'd been working at 6 a.m., I most likely would have had her to be checked in. And I, I don't want to know how that would have gone because she might have been looking at my stuff going, wait. Were you that person from like 3,000 years ago that had the tracheostomy tube? But thankfully we didn't have to go down that road and I was able to get on my flight, no delays. And I was just like, doo, 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 onto my flight. And I flew and everybody was cool. And then once I got on the plane, I was like, <laughs> hey babes, I got a tracheostomy tube and ventilator because you know, it's getting a little hard to breathe because a lot of carbon dioxide builds up underneath your jacket. So you need to uh, let yourself breathe out that carbon dioxide. Anyways, the flight attendants were like, hey, cool, she has a tracheostomy too, welcome on board. <laughs> the flight attendants were really nice about it and they didn't have any issues. <laughs> so that is my story about flying with a tracheostomy tube and ventilator and just traveling in general. People freak out about it. They're like, oh, they don't know what to do. And it can cause a lot of issues and complications. But now I know to cover up my tracheostomy tube and ventilator and nobody seems to care when you cover it up and it's like it disappears. <laughs> So thank you so much for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe down below. I hope you have a great day and a wonderful week. Bye-bye.